Hello, lovely. Hi. How are you, Audrey? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for doing this, because I know it's um, probably quite scary, I should imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's very nice here. Everyone's very, very kind. And um, thank you so much for doing this today, because it's been something that's really been on my mind a lot recently. Just speaking to a lot of my mates, basically, who have teenage children who are just all having a really rough time and and you're up for talking today about your own experience and maybe you can touch on how some of your friends are feeling too so so first of all as a 17 year old right now living a global pandemic you are dealing with quite a lot of anxiety yes um i think everyone is on their own personal level because it's just it's a very anxious time because no one really knows what's going on but um especially for people who have anxiety already it can really like overwhelm them like I know for me it's been very overwhelming at points but um my anxiety isn't as bad as some other people so I can only imagine how some other people are doing at the moment and how when you're feeling anxious or you have I don't know if you have an anxiety attack or how it comes on like how does it manifest what what do you feel like when when you're feeling anxious um well it gets very lonely and like all in it's all in your head and you're all in up in your head and you feel very alone and like enclosed so like being in the pandemic is it's very difficult because you can't get out and you can't really like go to different places so being stuck in one place and then having that feeling of feeling like trapped in your own head is very difficult to deal with in the pandemic definitely <laughs> so did you were you sort of feeling anxious prior to the pandemic did you sort of experience anxiety on a level prior to all this yeah yeah but it's it's definitely got um worse as soon as the pandemic started yeah, I mean, there, there, there are so many factors that I, I want to talk to you about, you know, one of them obviously being the pandemic and that we're just, you know, we're, we're social creatures and we're meant to be, especially at your age, at 17, my God, you're meant to be like out with your friends all the time and having the time of your life, like freedom and just having no responsibilities and all of that has been stripped away. Do you, do you think that's had an impact on you? Yeah, definitely, because one of the things that makes me feel so much better is being around other people and being around all my friends and like people who make me laugh and make me have a good time and just not being able like we missed our prom and I know that doesn't sound like a big deal but it I, is a big deal it yeah. is it's a big marker in your life Audrey I think it is a big deal yeah and we and we missed obviously we missed GCSEs I didn't get to do my GCSEs um and it was just it just sucks because it's like a big milestone that you just don't get to accomplish and then it just you feel a bit defeated and that also doesn't help as well just having all these like dead ends it's a bit um it's a bit weird yeah I think like with the exam thing it was really interesting talking to a lot of my friends even their kids were like absolutely gutted because of course you've built up your whole school life to this moment where you've been focusing and studying and then it doesn't happen and then some kids yes. who were like yay I'm not yeah. doing my GCSE so it was such a confusing time for for everybody, I think, at that point. And, you know, how are you dealing with the uncertainty of what lies ahead? Because, of course, we don't know, none of us know when this is ending or when we're getting to any sort of normalcy again. And at this point of your life, you know, you're, you're making lots of big decisions about what you might want to do and what you might want to do with your life after you, you finish college, etc. So how, how are you feeling about all of that? That is one of the biggest things that's worrying me at the moment, because, um, there's just no one has any idea what's going to happen so you can't really make any plans about what you want to do or where you want to go so I at the moment have literally no idea what is going to happen with like my future or anything and that's like th that's very scary <laughs> yeah I mean it's god I mean, it just it's oh it stresses me out thinking about it because Again, you know, that, that, that is a rite of passage that, you know, at your age, you, you start to sort of dream and think about where you want to head and what you want to do. So it's, um, I can really see how that's going to be affecting a lot of teenagers out there. And, and I guess because you're not able to socialise as you normally would and go to proms or even just go to like gatherings at friends' houses, I'd imagine that you're all on your phones a lot more than usual. Yeah, definitely. And that's, I know being on my phone definitely sets me off because it's like your phone is like a whole different world. And once you go in, it's like you've gone into this different world. And when you come out, it's like, 
oh, wait, you get a bit like, I, I know I do, I get a bit flustered and then I have to like take a break, do some exercise or something if I've been on my phone for too long. I know, I know. I mean, I, I think all age groups are falling into that trap yeah. massively, but I think, you know, as a teenager, you want to be connected to your friends at all times. Yeah. And do you have to almost like set yourself rules as when you, when you can go on your phone and when you need to put it down? Because I think if I was at your age, I mean, I didn't, there was no social media, of course, when I was a teenager, so that, that the option wasn't there. But I think if I was 17 and had social media, I would literally be on it all day. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Um, well, I have, every day I try and get outside at least once because I know that makes me feel so much better just being in the fresh air. Um, so that will be an hour that I'm not on my phone at least. And then, um, before I go to bed, I think it's really important before you go to bed to at least have half an hour off your phone because that can really affect how you're sleeping and, and sleep is so important at the moment to get like a sleep schedule. Um, because that makes you feel so much better but um so like half an hour before bed I'll read or do my homework or just read the book that I've been set for my English or something to get off my phone yeah you just kind of have to don't you otherwise you would literally go mad and and how how do you I mean it's it, it's fascinating to me at the sort of point I'm at in my life and the age that I'm at how I use social media is perhaps different to how teenagers would but I think there are still some sort of similarities. And, you know, I talk, I've talked to a lot of, well, I've interviewed a lot of people about it and talked to a lot of adults about the fact that we all know that sort of compare and despair model where you might compare yourself to somebody else, how they're, what they look like, how they're doing in life, if, they're, if they look happy, etc. And then that makes you, of course, feel absolutely horrendous. How do you think your age group are dealing with thinking we, you know, we know everything about everyone, making assumptions about everyone's happiness and success levels. How's that affecting teenagers? Well, I think that's one of the biggest issues with social media is everyone just being, like, comparing themselves to pictures or videos of other people. Because um, I know for a fact that some people, when I tell them about that my, my anxiety or having anxiety, they'd be like, oh, I never would have thought you would be the person to have that. And it's like, well, yeah, you don't, you don't really know because you don't see that side of people on social media. So, like, it's it's very difficult to gauge how people are feeling over a screen. So you, you really, really can't compare yourself to people online. But I know that's something that a lot of people struggle with. Yeah, and it's hard. It, like, even though we know that, it's hard in the moment to remember it. You know, we can yeah. still all massively fall into that trap. And then I want to get on to talking about... Um, just sort of like the pressures around school, I guess, because I don't know if this is sort of me making a, a general assumption, but it seems like the pressure at school is is way more potent than when I was at school. I mean, I don't think I went to a state school, uh, you know, regular school in sort of northwest London, and there was so little pressure to do well, you know, from my peers, maybe a little bit from the teachers, but I didn't really feel it. I was just kind of like, wanting to go out, see my friends, have a great time. But when I talk to, you know, my mates now who have teenage kids, that seems to be a huge pressure on teenagers that, you know, not only do you want to do well, do you want to get, now I know it's not A, Bs and Cs now, what is it, like eights and nines or whatever the hell yeah. it is. You all want to get, you know, the top, top marks. Um, and also there is a bit of pressure within your, your peer group as well. So do you feel that pressure on sort of the school front um I definitely did at GCSEs more for me because um at GCSEs you had to take maths and you had to take English and science like and French we had to take all of them um and we didn't have an option on that so that definitely caused a lot a lot of stress for me because um uh I wasn't particularly good at academic subjects so maths, I really struggled with maths and you have to get a five to pass, otherwise you have to do it again. So like that whole stress of constantly having this expectation that you have to get something, otherwise, you know, it, it's, it's quite scary. So I know for my A-levels, I, I went down a level and I didn't take such academic subjects because I knew that I couldn't deal with the same stress that I had at GCSE. So it is, it is quite a big problem. And I know a lot of people struggle with it more than me because... I didn't even take the worst GCSEs there were and I was still struggling. Like some people were taking like 
triple science and like all these really really difficult subjects and it's it is a lot I know a lot of people were struggling with that at school yeah I, I think um it goes all the way down to little kids I think you know maybe again just because we think we know so much more about each other and how, the sort of standards that other people are you know striving for or achieving at. I think even with my little ones you sort of feel it like oh my goodness are they up to the right academic level for their age group etc and I just don't think it was that important back in the day when I was growing up but you know it was it's always been around but it, the pressure wasn't there and it's just I find it um just bizarre that 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 seems to be really building at the moment for everybody and with your friendship circle um would you say it's pretty normal now for your for your friends to sort of be living at this heightened level of anxiety? Um, like, unfortunately, a lot of people I know are living, like, with anxiety or, um, like, depression or any of these sort of, like, constant burdens. And it's, it's a shame because no one, I don't think, I remember talking to my mum and she said, old people when I was young you never heard of any of this like no, no one really had that and I was like I know it's 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 a real shame because a lot of young people now do have it and it and it's it's really is a shame that that and what like what do you think the you know like we've, we've touched on some of the things but like what would help you guys out because you know it's true I think it's not it's not you know obviously across the board but when I was growing up I don't think it was the norm for teenagers to feel this stressed or, or this anxious um I, I really don't I, I grew up in a very very normal um environment it you know as I said went to a state school in a working class suburb but we just I don't think you know my school friends are still my 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 best friends now there's seven of us and growing up there wasn't a single one of us who said I feel anxious I feel depressed and, and each of us were going through different things you know, I was started doing a, a weird job at a young age and there was a bit of bullying involved and and then you know for one of my friends her parents were getting divorced and but I don't think that, that sort of constant that omnipresent anxiety was there or that really like low depression it just sort of I don't know I, th there wasn't so much pressure I guess or um or just analysis on it all because we weren't looking at what everybody else was doing and, and I wonder do you think you you kind of you and your friends know what that root cause is or what could help you guys out like what would lessen this anxiety for your age group well um it's it's different for everyone so they, there's different like on a personal level what I could do for myself to help me is obviously exercise eating healthy making sure I've got um a sleep schedule making sure I'm doing work just to like keep my mind busy but um the root of the cause I it's like I think mostly it's social media and school and it's, it's really hard to deal with because you can't just change it because everyone's on social media and everyone's at school so it's really really difficult to like change how it all works and with social media I don't think it unfortunately is going to change just like that like it's going to take a lot of work because everyone's on it and it's it's so difficult because you know you can't really do anything about it so I know I think it's just like personal like things to do is the way to get around it and like family and friends talking about it and just informing people and making sure you're talking to people I think that is the best way to deal with it at the moment yeah I I hate to sort of point fingers, but I do think that social media does have a huge impact on, well, everybody's mental health. We, we know it, although we still use it. So, I mean, we're on it now, but hopefully using it for some good. But, you know, there, there are moments where I'll use it for, you know, negative reasons, for self-punishment by scrolling through lots of other people's lives that look like they're all going well when mine feels like it doesn't. You know, we, we all get caught in the trap no matter what age. But I think for your age group growing up in these sort of formative years where you're working out who you are, what you want to do with your life. It, and as you say, it's not going to go anywhere, is it? So it is just about um, some governance around it and whether you have to, you know, unfortunately there isn't much at the moment. You can pick up your phone whenever you want and you can go on it in the middle of the night at three in the morning or whatever. So, you know, I actually did an interview today uh, for the podcast with, a, a brilliant guest who I, I won't spoil for everybody but this really wise guest was sort of 
saying that, you know, a lot of the time with this subject, when we're feeling anxious or depressed, it's not, it's not our fault. You know, we are living in quite a toxic environment where we're dealing with constant news bombardment and fear and social media. And it's, it's hard to, to dodge it. Would you say, um, you know, how, how you're digesting any sort of media, um, whether it's the news or seeing things in newspapers, magazines, how, how is that sort of like, because there's a lot of fear mongering at the moment. How's that affecting you mentally? Yeah, that was definitely at the beginning of the pandemic. That was a big factor in my anxiety because like when it all started, obviously the press, you know, they want to say all they can to get people to listen. So there is a lot of fear. It is, it is very fear based and that's very like hard for people with anxiety because, you know, not knowing what's going to happen. That's a big thing. Like you just, we didn't know. And even now, like it's still like, we don't really know what's going to happen, but, um, hopefully it is getting better which is like having hope and stuff and and good news that definitely makes me feel better because um like with the vaccines and people are getting out of quarantine and it is going down that's definitely making me feel a bit better about the whole situation yeah yeah no absolutely um I talked to quite a few of my mates before this today who have teenagers and sort of said you know what what is what is it that you really want to sort of understand? Well, I talked to Audrey today and quite a few of my friends have said, what's the, from your point of view, Audrey, as a 17 year old, what, what is the best way to parent a teenager who's dealing with anxiety at the moment without being overbearing? Um, well, I, I think, well, my mom definitely does an amazing job at looking after me as long as like, as well as my, four other siblings she does an amazing job and she I think just the best thing to do is be there for them listen to them whenever they want to talk just you know be someone that they can come and tell everything to and just listen and you know as much as phones and everything are a problem you know saying like oh just put down that phone you know and like oh just just go outside you know it is it is more than that so being able to just understand what they're going through and listen to them and and just be someone that they can you know put their trust into and and comfort them that is a very big factor in making me feel better because having someone there to comfort me that's definitely makes me feel so much better i mean your mum is amazing yeah i love i love your mum she's one of my favorite humans on the planet How, you know i oh god i mean my kids i've obviously i you know my stepchildren really really well after alona but my little ones, they're obviously going to be teenagers one day. And this is all stuff that I want to learn and get, get ahead of and sort of understand, especially with technology in the mix. You know, if your mum is, is saying to you, right, Audrey, I need you to put your phone down. Don't look at it for the next two hours or whatever. Is that helpful, unhelpful? How do we, get, how do we work together cohesively as a family with technology in the mix, knowing that it's tempting to look and knowing that it's probably not great for teens' anxiety? How, how do you think... What's the best way to work as a family with technology? Well, it's, it's really difficult because at the moment, I know, like, not being able to see anyone, being on my phone is, like, you know, the only way I can talk to my friends and, and have support from them. But, like, again, it is, it is quite bad to be on your phone all the time. So I don't think banning phones is, is going to help because people still want to talk to their friends if they can't see them and you know like there's a lot of people online that you can't can talk to and it'll make you feel better so banning like your phone for a certain amount of time like if it's like half an hour to go for a run or like an hour to go and do some exercise or i don't know go and do some art that's really really helpful for me as well just like to to get out of your phone for a little bit and then get back on and then that's fine and then before bed definitely take the phone before you go to bed or just not even take it, you know, just like put it down and make sure it's off. Yeah. Like at least half an hour before you go to bed because like sleep is one of the most important things at the moment for everyone. I have to turn my phone off at nine. Otherwise I literally will not sleep. Like actually yeah. last night I turned it off at about seven. I was like, I just, need, I just, I'm done. Like I felt really overwhelmed about it this week. I was like, I just need to not look on social media for a bit, even though I know all the traps and the tricks. I was just still yeah. getting really lost in it. And I just, you know, you do need to just turn off your phone sometimes. And yeah. then 
do you or any of your friends have any anxiety about you know school opening back up college opening back up you know how, how's that making you feel are you are any of you nervous about getting back into a social situation because i know for some kids who you know might have social anxiety or perhaps are bullied that is actually more terrifying than being in the pandemic yeah and that that is a big big problem but i think i mean i don't suffer with like social anxiety as much as the anxiety i have but um i know for people who do have it, it is it is a big problem you know knowing that at some point we're going to go back and at some point they're going to have to deal with school again but i i feel like everyone who's going to be coming back to school is going to be really happy about it to just like come and see everyone again and be around people that they know and that they can have fun with so i feel like it's going to be a very nice environment when everyone does go back to school so i don't think anyone needs to worry about it not being a nice environment because i i feel like it will be and everyone will be happy to be back yeah i agree i think there'll be a lot of celebration for you know schools and yeah. colleges and workplaces just everyone getting to be together and do exactly what what they should be doing um yeah, I just guess from what I'm hearing, Audrey, I just think like, as much as I hate to say it, like so much of this is about social media yeah, and how we manage it. And we're so far from having any answers or knowing, you know, I, I really don't have a clue. And it's something I've talked to a lot of people about, you know, how, how do we live alongside this? Because, you know, we've created the monster. We're not, we're not going to get rid of it. We've just got to to learn to live with it and for your age group where everybody um you know is discovering who they are and is and is also kind of i know what you know i remember being a teenager and you all kind of say all sorts of ridiculous things to each other in the moment to like get a laugh or whatever and that is so amplified due to social media it's so much louder it's in you know black and white you can read it and i find that terrifying you know do you think schools could do more to help with that well Definitely. I know some schools um, are not the best at dealing with bullying and like online incidents, but um, I think that would, it would definitely help more if schools did get more involved with these issues because, you know, like you were talking about people being scared to go back to school and like, this is the reason why, because not all of it will happen at school. Like a lot of yeah. it is going to happen online. So if, you know, if people feel like trusted enough, by their school to go and talk to them I feel like that's a very big part of it because it's not all at school to be seen I imagine like most of it's not at the moment yeah. you know like bullying back in the day I'm sorry to sound like such an old person who keeps saying this but I'm just using it as a reference because it did feel perhaps slightly easier and you know I'm not saying this to get any sort of sympathy at all but I was slightly bullied because I was the odd kid that was doing you know kids tv and it was I was a very easy target quite frankly and I had great friends and it you know it wasn't a huge big deal but it could only happen in the flesh when you're in person at school usually verbally or, or whatever but and for some kids a lot worse but now I feel like it's even more sinister that it's just it creeps online and it can be done in a, in in a, in such a way that you know you can hide behind your phone be a complete coward and send a message or or gang up on people or the other thing that i i really worry about is how you might be left out because again at school you might be left out in person if you know someone doesn't pick you to be on the netball team or hang out with you or whatever it might be but if you're not included in a whatsapp group now that's a thing being left out i mean that's a huge anxiety i i feel stressed out thinking about that <laughs> yeah no it it that is one of the worst things like being left out as well um that really really sets my anxiety off because you know you just want to be like people you want to be friends with you want to talk to them and you want to have fun with them and if you're like not included it's it's a bit you know it's not the best <laughs> i definitely and, can't do i mean that. do you do you feel like Obviously, the discussion around mental health has opened up somewhat over the last five, maybe 10 years, but sort of five years. Like the conversation has sort of expanded. We've still got a long way to go and there's still lots to talk about and there's still lots to fix. But do you and your friends feel comfortable talking about this sort of thing to each other? You know, would you open up to one of your friends and, and talk about this and, and, or ask them how, how they were doing mentally? 
yeah definitely I have some amazing friends that um deal with sort of the same thing um and one of my best friends she deals with the same thing and I know that having her has made me feel a lot better because we've been able to talk about it and know what it feels like and be able to comfort each other in a way that we know is going to help because we've dealt with it before so having like talking to your friends is the is one of the best things to like get around it and even if they haven't dealt with anxiety themselves you know they're still gonna be there for you and comfort you in any way they can and it's that's the best feeling knowing that you have people there for you yeah I'm glad I'm glad that you feel like you're able to do that and you can open up to each other because I think it's very important because so many teenagers feeling you know exactly the same as each other so that's a really good thing like yeah I just God, I think this whole social media and even like, you know, WhatsApp thing and whatever of being left out or, you know, the, the sort of online bullying side of it. Well, we all know it's huge and it's prevalent, but I just think there's so much more we need to be doing about it, whether it is in schools or whether it's, I don't know, initiatives. I was going to say government led initiatives, but they they got other stuff to deal with. Um, but, you know, I just, that, that is just, that worries me big time. And, um, I don't know. It just I just want to keep talking about this subject matter and trying to learn more and talk to more teenagers like you, Audrey, so that I can really get a sense of, of what is going on. Um, not that I know how to solve any of it, but I do definitely think that it's something I want to look at in the work that I'm doing and mm. um, maybe to just create a friendlier, nicer place for people to be online, you know, kindness, yeah. old fashioned kindness and being nice to one another it doesn't you know it goes a long way and um yeah god it's terrifying terrifying um but you're doing brilliant Audrey and I'm I'm really appreciative that you were up for talking to me today because I know it's a really personal thing to talk about that quite publicly as a teenager who is still you know at school so I really really appreciate that and um We'll just keep talking off our phones. We'll keep talking in real life and look for more solutions or I don't know. Just got to keep talking about it all, haven't we? Well, you know, you never know what someone else is going through. So being nice to someone, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost anything. You know, if, if you can be nice to someone, be nice to someone because you have no idea what is happening in their lives. So that's one of the biggest bits of advice I could give. Just, you know, be kind be nice to people and then yeah. nothing bad can come out of that be nice just be nice yeah. um well audrey i'm i'm so grateful thank you so much my love and i hope i get to see you in the flesh at some point yeah. in the future give your mum a massive kiss from me i will and so much love to all of your friends and all teenagers who are having to grow up with the social media i would not have coped. I don't know how you guys are dealing with it. It is just completely bonkers. So all of you lot, just as Audrey said, keep being nice to each other, check in with your mates and get off your phone when you can.